and welcome to the Living Harmony podcast. My name is Manuela Ulram. I'm a shamanic coach and the founder of the Living Harmony. On today's podcast, we have our beautiful Paola Knecht, who is the author of a new book called A World of Illusions. Hello, Paola. Thank you very much for joining in. Thank you, Manuela, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks for your time and coming to my podcast, which is very new on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but we're growing our channel. Yeah, Paola, it's it's great to have you here. So you have written a new book. If you'd like right. to introduce yourself first and tell me a bit about your new book. Sure. So um, as you already mentioned, my name is Paola Knecht. Uh, I'm a leadership and transformational coach. Uh, I love to help people improve their lives and uh, and to help them in their journey to find also uh, the truth about themselves. And that's basically the main premise of the book. So it's called A World of Illusions. And basically it's an invitation to um, basically wake up to the reality of the world and uh, to as also ask you the question and um, are you living uh, your own truth are you developing your own critical thinking uh, are you thinking for yourself or you are being um, pushed or manipulated uh, in the way uh, you think or act so um, that's basically what the book is about I present uh, a critic about the current state of the world as we know it's quite chaotic it's quite dense at the moment so many things are happening and uh, it's important that we step back from our daily lives and analyze this with a more critical eye that we learn to think and that we learn to discern to what uh, the main uh, or the, the main speech or the main status quo is telling you uh, the things are happening for this or this reason. Uh, sometimes there are other agendas that we don't see and it's important that we understand it, not only for the future of humanity, but also to know how to navigate through these difficult times and still succeed in our lives and still be happy, still be plenty. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the mission of, of what the message that we I try to deliver in the book. Yeah. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And what inspired you? So is it like one morning you woke up and you were like, I will write the book or how did it all start? Or did you get some impulses from the universe or how did it all started yeah good question so um this is the second book i write so um when i was finishing my first book um i got suddenly the idea that um it's important also to talk about um about the topics that i touch in the book there are um topics that are uh, very relevant for for today uh, at this point in time and it will be in the coming years so i saw since 2019 i start i started to question everything uh, that was going on in the world and um, the economic the part of economics the political environment all these conflicts um this uh, social unrest and 2019 was before the, the corona era so I was a little bit ahead with my <laughs> with my <laughs> critics <laughs> and the funny part is I was working in the pharma industry at the time so I don't know why but for some reason I thought something is not uh, going um, something is not good mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there is uh, something in me telling me uh, too many things going on and I started to to do the the writing of uh, I mean start sketching the book in a way but without thinking this will become a book um, okay. and then at one point in uh, after I released the first one and um, the second which is this one a world of illusion started to take more shape I started to get more ideas and more topics into it 
until um, it became to a point that I decided to also publish this one. So it was really um, a long process of thinking and analyzing the situation, writing it down, um, also which kind of topics I wanted to cover because it's a, a broad and um, thematic. I cover topics of health or education, of uh, political ideologies that are toxic in our environments. I also talk about spirituality, about the search for the truth. So it's quite a wide range of topics. So I had to look for a way to condense the topics into um, analyzing what, what happens versus uh, what I drive my conclusion, how should we tackle these uh, this world events in a way that that we have a more positive outcome for ourselves. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. This is really brave that you started with all these critical topics. You know, in these days, it's so important that we think for ourselves. You know, we have been like programmed that we have like our brain park in the parking lot, and everybody is like, I felt some during the pandemic, everybody was like a robot. They yeah. say this on TV, everybody is like a sheep to this. Nobody was critical thinking anything. No, wear your mask, you go and wear your mask. Get vaccinated, I line up because everybody's telling me to do so. The news, at work, there was some pressure. Everywhere you, you turn on the radio, you uh, watch TV, the, especially the, the mainstream and um, legacy media everybody had the same story and i know this old tactic repetition is king the more you repeat a message the more it it enters your subconscious and you really uh, regard this as the truth and this was a very effective tactic and it worked and in, in everywhere in the world this was a, an amazing <laughs> planning and execution yeah of yeah Yes, I totally agree with you. It's it's a big agenda who is still running and we don't know what else is coming. So this is good that we have people like you who bring out all this awareness to humanity. And what's like your um your topic? You say you talked about spirituality, um health, the schooling system. What was like the 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 biggest challenge to to write about? Uy, um, each topic was a challenge because I, I basically dismantle most of the, I mean, we, we live um, our lives trusting everything uh, in our environment, the food mm -hmm. we eat, um, the, me the medicine we take when we get sick, um, we send our children to school hoping that they are learning the right things and they are becoming critical thinkers. Um, we watch TV with the hope that what you see in the news is true journalism and not a propaganda for something that is uh, behind that we cannot see. So we live in this world of illusions. We think that everything that has been around us is the truth. And um, so I dismantle every single of these aspects of life. So how I believe it was and what it really is. And the most difficult part was, of course, to dismantle the pandemic <laughs> yeah. because it was a very sensitive topic and you also get quite censored if you do so. If I try to upload some videos in Facebook, I get immediately censored. Uh, X or what it was before Twitter is now called X is a more free speech area but still um, you are subject to a lot of critics and attacks if you touch such topics but I my goal is not to convince people that this was a pandemic uh, although I arrived to that conclusion but I just simply um, as an observer I saw how it all developed and made some questions along the way. So how could they coordinate the um, waves of uh, when they said, yeah, first is the old people that are dying. Uh, and that was in 2020 the case and the, the 
percentage rate of uh, younger people was 0.02%, for example. And then the following year, when they roll out the vaccinations and most people at that age, the critical age, got it, then they started to, uh, to target the younger people. They start to say, yeah, now hospitalizations are full. And I, I really correlated all the news that were at that time, which messages were they were given and how the, they planned the rollout of the vaccines. And then once you see this with a critical eye, they, you say it it is masterfully planned. It, it, it cannot yeah. be coincidence yeah. that it was so precisely uh, executed. And um, and also the consequences for the big elephant in the room and now excess uh, deaths of unknown sources uh, and uh, all the statistics are there for everybody to see. And then if you go even deeper into the research, even you go back certain years, you see that the AIDS um, pandemic at the time in the 80s was executed exactly the same way. The same organizations were involved, the same rollout, the same narratives, just back in the 80s. And maybe we didn't have this social media, not viral news like we have now, but it was a similar kind of story. And then you start to connect dots and you start to see a pattern. And then you start to ask yourself, what, why, and what is the intention behind? And then if you, um, this is just one example, if you take education and um, how they plan the schools, how they plan the standardized system to, to basically produce people uh, unable to do critical thinking, which is what schools are supposed to teach. But then if you analyze the models they use is uh, obedience, is um, follow rules, do not question authority, which is the teachers. Be afraid of consequences if you don't do your homework, if you fail the test. So these are all instruments of social engineering that are very um, dangerous and they are actually, um, infil they have infiltrated our societies for so long that we are unable to see them. So I just touched you two topics that were sensible and I have others <laughs> but just to give an example how deep I go I also look at the past I see how it developed over time and what is the outcome today which yeah. is uh, critical thinking is dying mm -hmm. yeah critical thinking is not on the on the menu <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah it, it's not and as you said in in school the little children get programmed to you have to make do your homework otherwise you get the consequences you know it's all these patterns and then they start to to make our lives so expensive that husband and wife have to go to work Absolutely. like back in the 70s back in the 70s um one salary was enough to feed um, a wife, two children, they had a car. So inflation and the quality of life have, has decreased tremendously over the last 15 years. Now everybody, husband and wife, have to go to work. The kids go to kita, to daycare, and then they get programmed at a very young age. Exactly. And I touched that topic as well because I have two small 